So, hello everyone. Welcome to the beautiful Milliway stage. Um, it's so nice uh, to see all of you uh, on this nice and sunny day, which is going oh. to be very hot. So, what do you have to do? Drink water! Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Also, use sunscreen and stay in the shade. Take care of your fellow creatures. So, we are live. Yes. All right. So, also to my dear creatures on the internet, I'm really pleased to announce uh, Melinux. Melinux likes to play with machines and is going to talk to us about a very interesting and important topic. It's going to be about open source technologies that promote accessibility. Please, everyone, give a warm round of applause to Melinux. <laughs> Well, good morning, CCC. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about how open source technology can help compensate certain handicaps. Um, I don't like to talk about myself, so ju let's just get rid of it uh, first. Who am I? I'm a 46-year-old web dev dropout who turned into InfoSec, um, an InfoSec consultant. Got uh, too many interests to be an expert with anything, but uh, I like to play with machines. And I felt in love with uh, hardware hacking during um, uh, Mitch Altman's uh, soldering workshop, uh, during which I soldered the TV Be Gone. And that was like 10 years ago. And um, I've enjoyed playing with alternative ways to control devices ever since. And I'm about to leak some of my most precious medical data and expose my biggest vulnerabilities today so that you, dear bad hackers in the universe, can gather enough information and motivation to hack the hell out of not just mine, but as many handicaps as you can. Well, the context is that we have an environment that's full of connected objects and other gadgets, and that makes our life way easier. Uh, now we can do about anything from a smartwatch and a smartphone. Um, can spy on your kid or uh, turn on the, the heating or water the plants. And these technologies are also very useful to help, comp to, oh, sorry, <laughs> to help compensate uh, certain handicaps, but they have limits when it regards people whose handicap or combination thereof prevents them from manipulating uh, a smartphone, reading a screen, or using vocal command. And as a patient, it, can, it is very frustrating to be shut off from all these possibilities, especially when they have the potential to um, improve our quality of life and um, to become more independent, uh, being as at as autonomous as possible is a need we all share and it shouldn't be a luxury. The good news is that it's not necessary to reinvent the wheel because as you all know here, I think, there are alternative ways to interact with our in technological environment and th yeah, they already exist. So define handicap. A handicap or disability in proper English is a condition that restricts a person to function physically, mentally, or socially. And they come in all shapes and forms. They can be visible, invisible, painful, not painful, uh, temporary, chronic. And, um, and the impact that your handicap has on someone's life mainly depends on available support, resources, and surroundings. From uh, my own experience, there comes the leak. I can safely say that uh, being diagnosed with a severe form of endometriosis um, turned my life upside down. And for those who don't know what endometriosis is, like me, it causes, uh, amongst other unpleasant things, uh, chronic pain. And there's no cure yet. Yet. <laughs> So I took a few years of hormonal therapy and surgeries, but now I'm able to sit, walk, stand again. Uh, but there were long periods of time where every single move uh, and step was painful and so precious, and it had to be anticipated and optimized. But I'm okay now. I define hack my handicap well. 
As a hacker, I made a mistake to consider my body like a complex yes, yet fascinating machine that was full of signals and electrical impulses and where the peripheral nervous system was just another network to debug. Uh, senses like the sight of hearing or touch could be replaced by cameras, microphones, sensors and a lot of uh, MCUs since machine didn't need them to function. And body movement limitation could be expanded uh, by robotic and mechatronic solutions. But yeah, in short, I wanted to treat my handicap like a vulgar bug or shortcut that needed fixing. But I was wrong. My perspective changed when I met two other technophiles who, whose, handic whose handicap were different from mine and were also looking for alternative ways to make our uh, to improve our quality of life, and so we naturally became friends. The target, well, our group is uh, small, but the combined li list of our uh, illnesses, symptoms, and things we cannot do is as long as my arm. So I guess we are the targets, uh, with the notable e um, exception that we are doing it willingly, as long as it's in a controlled and safe environment. It's not that we don't appreciate our privacy, but let's face it, there's no such things as problem solving without proper problem solving without proper information gathering. None of us is smarter than all of us, and it's an illusion to think that our medical data are safe anyway. So we are represented by this little mascot. She's called Nyan, as, as you can see. She, she can do, um, she, she represents the combination of our handicap and this is who you should actually be hacking. She's representing us, so as you can see, she can, uh, she can communicate a bit, but it's painful, and she can uh, grab things a little bit. So that's the objective to make. That, that makes it very difficult to use a, a mobile phone, for instance. So we need to find an alternative. But she reminds us also of the things we can do instead of the things we cannot do. And she's a cutie. <laughs> so define the scope. Well, living with a handicap in 2023 isn't as effortless as it should be. I mean, we have uh, more knowledge, uh, protective laws, medical equipment than ever. Uh, but many disabilities cannot be compensated yet. In my opinion, the main reason for this exclusion is not caused by the lack of available technology called solution, but getting access to them. In France, for instance, it's a bureaucratic hell to get equipment. Uh, their price is outrageously expensive, so it usually takes at least a year between the request for adaptive equipment and its actual delivery to the patient, and that's the best case scenario. Um, some patients that have to wait years for a diagnosis, without which with, uh, it's not possible to even apply for medical equipment. So you can really stay years without support, and as long as you don't have the handicap stamp on your card, then you cannot even request any equipment. And yeah, and even then, we, our profile has to fit a strict protocol that doesn't make any sense, where uh, handicaps are categorized in, in a sort of spreadsheet and uh, with percentages, and this uh, spreadsheet will determine whether your access to a better quality of life is granted or not. The attack surface. So I wish we could hack the whole planet to make it accessible for all, but it's going to take years to, have, to make it happen, if ever. And the reason that, that this is not happening yet is money, of course, strict legislation, proprietary softwares, medical certific certification, because every device is that used by somebody with a handicap has to be stamp with a C, um, um, uh, the, well, it has to be certified to be used, and um, 
yeah, all these things have to be taken into consideration. But fortunately, there's a hack to bypass this, all these constraints. Uh, since it's not illegal yet <laughs> to hack our own devices and our own homes, it is possible to build interfaces that will only work for one patient and their environment. And uh, another tip is to avoid doing it for commercial purposes if you want to stay out of trouble. So it would be, um, don't do this for money. <laughs> so long live open source technology. Uh, so I guess the attack surface is located anywhere between what the patient can do and what the patient really would like to do on their own. How to? Well, most of us know someone who lives with a handicap. Uh, so that's a good place to start. Uh, in many cases, it's just sufficient to, to show patients how to exploit the uh, native uh, accessibility functions of their smartphones, um, like uh, screen readers, vocal command, uh, magnification, color correction, or just adding shortcuts to the home screen, and many more. And that really, really helps a lot because most people don't know how to fully exploit the, their, the possibility of their smartphone. You can also uh, find uh, a lot of information online, but it's not as efficient as uh, joining the, for instance, the open source medical supply community and or participate to the uh, uh, hacking health marathon so the so you can just get your hands on it and as a tip uh, also um, even if you really want to help please do not impose your help uh, to someone with a handicap unless they really agree to it and don't call your beta testers guinea pigs. <laughs> it's not very appreciated. Uh, resources. Uh, well, nowadays it's quite easy to find some uh, affordable uh, hardware uh, that's uh, well documented and open source. But my favorite tools to play with are the TV Begun, it will always be my favorite because it was the first and it triggered a small revolution in my head. Because, uh, yeah, soldering it, it taught me so much. It gave me countless hours of fun. And it was also an, an excellent, um, and, and it, it brought me a l enough confidence, not a lot, but enough confidence to start playing with hardware. And that's, yeah, soldering the TV begun and uh, playing with the, the Arduino platform. And it, it really, uh, opened my world to the open source uh, hardware uh, tools like Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and there are many shields and clones. Uh, another um, tool I like to play with is the Easy 430 Kronos from Texas Instrument, which is a wearable sport watch development kit that has a microcontroller MSP430 with an uh, integrated uh, sub-giga wireless transceiver. And it also has a few sensors, but uh, basically it can allow you to program custom wireless application. That's back in 2013. I think it's not sold anymore, but um, I have one with me if you want to play <laughs> later. Uh, and I found it particularly useful to use as a mouse replacement because it's a um, uh, sometimes I needed to get a more comfortable position and uh, the laptop on my legs and the mouse and it wasn't very handy so I, that also worked for lazy people by the way <laughs> so it was just easy to to control my computer from uh, I couldn't do everything with it but I could at least scroll select and go back so that was um, that was uh, yeah, that's not open source, but it costs like 50 euros. And uh, there's a, a platform, a development platform with a gra graphical interface. So it's a really good way to start playing with this uh, um, kind of uh, wireless application. Uh, if you want something that's custom. 
And one thing I really like too, if anyone participated in making it, uh, it's the radio badge from the CC camp, a CCC camp from 2015. Uh, that was basically, uh, yeah, that's a full feature SDR of the Plex transceiver, transceiver, sorry. Uh, software compatible with the hard drive and it can process uh, data standalone or pass the samples um, to the computer where further signal processing can take place with GNU radio for, for, for example. And uh, also the robotic arm um, edge, so it's a kit, a robotic arm kit um, from OWIKIT, um, which is not open source, but that cost also like 50 euro. Uh, uh, yeah, it's quite affordable, very fun to play with. Uh, it comes with a serial remote, but it's possible to yeah, it's like an Arduino shield, let's say, modify the Arduino with a shield motor in one, and then, uh, yeah, you can do about anything you want with it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you, you, yeah, some people can uh, control it with Bluetooth, for instance. But uh, I tried to control it with my sport watch. It didn't work so far, but I'm not giving up. Work in progress. Uh, so uh, I've been participating to the Hacking Health uh, Marathon since 2019. That's uh, an event that takes place uh, once again in my hometown. Uh, it's co-organized by the regional hospital, the city hall, and the Paul Miko Technique, so it's, which is a kind of federation that gathers um, 240 local industrial companies. And sherry on the cake, it's perfectly legal. About 20 challenges are selected every year, and each challenge represents a problem, that, a problematic suggested by patient or medical care provider, for which uh, no solution has been found yet. After that, we get 48 hours to provide a POC or a prototype, with the support of many experts and well equipped and uh, with a well equipped fab lab, in a fantastic environment and amazing people. And so far, uh, from the previous participation, I'm glad I had the uh, opportunity to work on developing, developing a communication model uh, dedicated to people with a locked-in syndrome, uh, some kind of alternative universal control uh, for someone who couldn't move a lot or two, and an assistive uh, robotic arm that help people eat on their own. The impossible interface, uh, so yeah, I was participating to the Hacking Girl for three years and last year I took all my courage, but I suggested a challenge uh, instead of just participating. And the challenge I offered was to find a solution for people with low arm and finger mobility. Um, couldn't use smartphone the traditional ways, and that could, would allow an easier interaction with their connected object as well with non-connected objects, such, such as the button of a lift or just a light switch. And this is why it was nicknamed impossible, uh, because yeah, you either can control something that's connected or or you have an arm to press a, sw a switch, but there's no there's no app that can uh, put on the lift. Uh, uh, that can press a uh, lift button. Our time was limited, so we focused on hacking the lift and build a prototype that's basically a servo motor on rails uh, with a Arduino Uno, controlled by the uh, Arduino. And we made a nice fake finger uh, so that, uh, yeah, it really was like a physical finger that, was, uh, that could be uh, controlled with the Arduino, uh, it was through uh, Arduino infrared um, a remote, um, because we didn't have uh, Bluetooth options at the time. Infrared is not really good for people with low mobility, by the way, because uh, you have to be right in front of the receiver to... Uh, to 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 get the to be able to control it. Oh, 19 minutes. <laughs> uh, so, 
yeah, when I re playing with the lift was very instructive, but the solution had too many limits, and only um, as only adapted lift could have been used anyway. So I went back to the original idea of building a universal remote control that could handle several communication protocols like a Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi, infrared, uh, LoRa, and that could also control a robotic arm when a physical interaction was needed. So I'm still convinced it is possible to build it. Uh, so I changed the name from the impossible interface to Buchu, which phonetically sounds like little cute in French. Um, however, there's still a long road ahead and it's going to take a lot of time to get there. And that's why I'd like to take this opportunity to ask for your precious help uh, to make Buchu safer, stronger and smarter. So don't hesitate to contact me by mail if you have any question at project at albayers.tech. And um, yeah, the, the help I need is not just sending money because with the money I'm only going to buy some hardware and um, what uh, we really need is uh, technical expertise um, because there, once again, none of us is smarter than all of us. <laughs> Uh, so, there. And for last, this is a picture of uh, what Buchu looks like for now. <laughs> uh, it's a five axis robot uh, that's Arduino compatible. Uh, with uh, There are actually six uh, servo motors, and the extra one, I put it on the top with this fake finger <laughs> to show that, uh, that uh, we could manipulate it. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, and like, like an extra finger if uh, the hook wasn't enough. And uh, on the right hand side, you have one of my beta testers. And uh, it's not on scale, it's just a prototype, but the idea would be to, um, to be able to clip it on a wheelchair, tablet, and then uh, uh, use uh, this. Uh, we did the test with the badge. Uh, from MCH from last year and use it as a Bluetooth remote control. And there's Neon Cat on it, so it's cool. Um, okay, so that's it for today. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you so much, Merlinox, for your insights and sharing all your experiences. We have five minutes for questions. Over there is an angel. If you wish to ask a question, please go over to the angel and speak into the microphone. Um, but um, maybe you could go a bit more into detail what kind of technical knowledge you read right, need right now. Maybe can you... Uh, robotic, mechatronic, signal treatment, um, um, any uh, w w yeah, uh, web dev <laughs> web developers. I, I think it would be nice to build a website. I didn't do it yet, but uh, it's in the pipe. So if someone could take this out of my hand, that would be lovely. But uh, yeah, I always say if you want to help. Uh, I'd rather have a donation in time, uh, but if you have nothing else, you can offer money. But I'm only going to buy hardware with it, so... I'd rather have hardware <laughs> and technical expertise. Uh, hello, uh, hello. Thanks, thanks for sharing your experience and insights. Um, uh, my question would be if I uh, someday or some of us might uh, come into a company that is building um, some kind of technologies like person lifts or whatever um, and we want to suggest optimizations um, but do not have ourselves the experience of having some kind of disability. Is there some kind of document well known issues I could just hand over and say hey maybe these are the problems let's go into it because well, the usual problem, as we all know, is that often in these rooms where all the decisions are made, we have a lot of male white people sitting, no handicaps, and no one yeah. is just aware of, hey, 
it could be easy if we just implement it, but we are not aware of it. Is there some just a PDF There's no or centralized platform where you can, you know, like a week page, uh, not yet. That's why I need a web dev. The plan is, of course, this is open source, huh? and uh, the goal is to make it under 500 euros. But that would be indeed ideal if we had just the one uh, platform where we could gather all the information, uh, work in progress, where do I need help, and. Uh, <coughs> there is the website of open source medical supplies dot uh, org uh, that is uh, very good and it does uh, it was born during uh, the first wave of covid and so um, yeah there's a whole community out there we're not alone anymore and uh, so you can already find a lot of solutions uh, alternative solutions let's say uh, whether it's about uh, making water drinkable or making them a face mask uh, and uh, the uh, some assistive uh, open source assistive robots. I, I'm not the first one to try this. Uh, there, there's lots of documentation online, but uh, I'm not sure I answered your question. <laughs> I mean, you can still drop an email if you're interested. Don't hesitate. To the email. The email to the homepage yet on one of your first slides, um, uh, hack my health or something. Uh, hack my handicap. Uh, I, I I put my email right there. <laughs> As the here, <laughs> take feature if you want. Um, yeah. Oh, Christian. Yeah, thank you for the talk. And uh, you mentioned donations and hardware. Is there anything specifically that you'd like? And can people send it to you? And is, you know, what, what sort of. Anything, uh, really. Uh, we can. Uh, uh, I mean, all the uh, micro USB devices that are obsolete now, we can still use them, you know, all the legacy tech, let's say. So if you have, uh, I don't know, old Arduinos, uh, uh, old Raspberry Pi, uh, servo motors, uh, yeah, microcontrollers, uh, um, yeah, uh, the, the hardware is uh, hard to get uh, my hands on. It's, it's affordable now, but I, I break so much stuff that it costs me a lot of money. <laughs> but yeah, but the expertise is really the most precious for me. Because huh? uh, uh, this is like my hobby, this is not my profession. And, uh, and uh, I'm, not that, I'm not that smart <laughs> on my own. So yeah, any help really is welcome, but definitely hardware. Uh, if you have anything, uh, you know, uh, lots of people get the badge, don't use it. So if you don't know what to do with your badge, uh, you can recycle it with me. I will take great care of it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. All right. So, <laughs> thank you all for your questions. Uh, this was the talk of Melinox Hack My Handicap. Please give a warm round of applause for our awesome speaker. <laughs>